All right, fellas, Destiny 2 Season of the Wish is now here, and with every new season comes a new seasonal activity. And as for the new seasonal activity, The Coil, it is probably the most rewarding seasonal activity you will ever have seen in the history of Destiny 2. I am not even over-exaggerating. For one full non-optimized run, you are able to collect a total of four chests. And the beautiful thing is, is that when you do a fully optimized run of The Coil, you can quadruple the amount of loot earned. But in this video, we will be going over all of the details about the coil and how to optimally farm for it. And if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out more than you know. Now getting into it, the coil can be launched from the helm, and as many already know, it is a three-man activity. That gets more difficult the further you are into it. Upon entering, you will see a pot that essentially introduces you to the point system for the entire activity, as when you shoot it, it will explode into a flurry of moats. And I know we all want to groan at the sight of these things, but I promise you this isn't Gambit. It's way better. <laughs> when picking up these motes, you will gain a bunch of currency. This currency is used solely for buying upgrades at this Techian vendor here. There's not too many to choose, but there are two more additional mods that can be entered into the vendor by completing the seasonal vendor challenge. Your wishes is my command. All of the mods are self-explanatory upon reading them, so I'll save that for you guys just to do on your own time when exploring this activity. What I will say is, is that if you want a tier two or three upgrade, you will need to do a little bit of saving, meaning completing a round or two without purchasing an upgrade. And in additional notes, this currency does not carry in between runs. Meaning if you don't spend any in the run you are currently in, then complete the run, then start the activity back up again, your currency will start back at zero. So spend it while you can, because it's not permanent. Now once you're done with the vendor, you can come up to the portals. And if you have a player stand on each plate, or simply do this. Deciding that every void hand cannon has to be exactly 180 RPM or 100. You will officially start your run. Here is where I see people getting confused about how to really play this activity. I understand the objective is telling you to find three plates in order to get to the next room, but this is strictly only to keep the players less confused on how to get to the next stage. The real goal of this activity is to smash as many pots and collect as many motes as possible. In this activity, it is set on how high your score can get, and the higher your score is, the more access you have to loot. The only way to increase your score is by collecting these moats. I know we are used to nightfall type scoring where collecting orbs and defeating enemies increase your score at the bottom right, but in this activity, it is just the moats. And once your score is high enough, you will see a prompt in the bottom left saying the respective path has a secret chest in wait. This means somewhere in the room, a door has opened and you will find a bunch of pots for points along with two chests. One of these chests is a fake one and will kill you upon trying to open it. The other chest will reward you with anything from the seasonal vendor. This does include red border weapons and dreaming city weapons. The easiest way to figure out which chest is fake is by the obvious holes under it that will shoot spikes out of it. Now here's your disclaimer. If you are behind on points and progress through the activity, you will notice that your secret chest doors will be lagging behind you, meaning you will be on your second run, but it's claiming that the first run's chest are now available. If you get this result, it is going to be very hard to recover for every secret door that is not opened, you are missing out on about five or six pots worth of points. And on average, each pot is worth a thousand points. So make sure you are thorough with each room with your team. I know there's a modifier called togetherness in this activity, but the best and fastest strategy is to split up. Now these secret chests pop up in every room except boss rooms and what I like to call intermission rooms. Intermission rooms are the rooms after your vendor room when you are starting your run for the second round or above. Now there is a max of four total runs, unfortunately, and for each run you will have a guaranteed chest at the end. And with the additional two secret chests per run, if you are optimal, you can gain three chests per run. Now here's the kicker, if you are optimal for all four rounds, gaining a max score. There will be a portal at the end of round four with two choice chests that have icons above them. You can only choose one of these, so choose wisely, and three chests located in a triangle formation. There is a chest that seems to be locked. It may be exotic based or something, but as of right now, I have yet to have the opportunity to open it. But with the guaranteed chests for three runs and the additional extra two chests per run and the fourth run rewarding four chests alone, if your score is high enough, 
you are walking out with a total of 16 individual loot drops. The end all be all most rewarding activity in Destiny 2. Now to get down to the strats, much like the Legend campaign there is a modifier called Multiplicity, making it more difficult the larger your fire team is. For my team we ran one of each class only because that's just what we naturally main. But for ad clear rooms, standard ad clear weapons work just fine, no need to get too fancy. But if you really want to get on the nerves of your Sunbracer's Warlock and your Banner of War Titan, run Graviton Lands and watch as you rob all of the kills and they can't proc their stuff. Now for the boss rooms. I ran with the good old Apex Predator for my first initial runs, but it was nowhere near optimal. The optimal strat is to run a Lament or just any sword that you're comfortable with. With or without surges you can get by just fine for there is a modifier for sword surges this week for this activity. Plus with the idea of the ammo economy, it's just the better option versus rockets. Now I hope this video has helped you and if it has, like I said before, you can help me out massive mounts by simply hitting the like and subscribe button. Take care and peace.